Can you stick around for this next one? Uh, don't go anywhere. Let's sure. bring in someone who was in those meetings. William Poole is the former president of the St. Louis Federal Reserve, and he joins us this morning. Uh, William, good to have you. Welcome. Yep. I'm sure uh, you're Carl, good to be with you. And uh, Steve also. Hi, Steve. Hey, Bill. How are you? I'm sure you heard Steve go through th some of those, uh, yeah. and you heard Steve's characterization. Here's the Times. They're going through these as we speak right now. Uh, they call it a sign of a somnolent institution finally lurking into action. Is that how you recall it? No, I, I, don't, uh, I don't think that characterization is uh, fair or accurate. Uh, what we did not know, but I don't think uh, many other people did either, what we did not know is that there were so many banks that had a large, huge portfolios of subprime paper, long-term, long-maturity subprime, financed with very short-term paper, commercial paper, a few weeks, and practically no capital. We should have understood that better, and we didn't. Uh, August meeting, you are the first to push for discount rate cuts and liquidity measures. Uh, some people calling you pressure today. What were you thinking at the time, and how difficult was it to get others to think that way with you? Well, as I remember, the uh, I think the August meeting you have it in front of you, I think it was August 7, that's what I remember. Yes. Uh, and it was, that was just before the market started to really break apart. And, I, and that uh, August 7 was a Tuesday. And the uh, Thursday, right after that, the markets were already under distress, and we had a St. Louis Fed board meeting. And uh, St. Louis, I think, was the first of the reserve banks to propose a discount rate cut. And it was a consequence of my feeling, very strong feeling, that we had a lot of problems with the stresses in the commercial paper market that were becoming very visible by that Thursday, yeah. Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting, and I'm fascinated to go back and read all this stuff, but I think it's important to read history for what it tells you about the present. And I wonder if we go back now and look and have the things that you said uh, been true. For example, had the Fed known more about the balance sheets of the banks and the pervasiveness of subprime, had it reacted earlier than it did and not been as concerned about inflation, do you think the outcome would have been different? Well, the the outcome would have been different only if the Fed and others had reacted back in uh, 2004, 2005, 2006. But the problem was that it was official policy of the United States government, both President Bush and the Congress, to encourage subprime expansion. That was the problem. So even if we had known, uh, if Congress would not have cooperated, uh, then the problem would not have been avoided. Bill, the other thing that I think is going to be pr important for the current debate is the Fed doesn't really see it coming all that well. Raising the question That's of right, right now, would the Fed see coming the opposite side, say longer than ex stronger than expected growth or inflation? Should this make us cautious about how much we rely on Fed forecasting here? I have consistently, year after year, while I was in office uh, and before and since, uh, emphasized the importance of forecast errors. You cannot build policy on the basis of the point forecast alone. And therefore, we have to be uh, prepared for the economy and the inflation rate to come in either above or below the point estimate. And the failure to be so well prepared for those uh, outcomes is, is, is where we get into problems and where we did then and where we could now. William, you said uh, we haven't had a fiscal policy complication coinciding with monetary policies really since the end of World War II. Uh, what, how do you envision those two factors commingling this year? Well, the issue is how fast things might come unraveled if there is no fiscal plan in place by the end of this year. At the moment, it does not appear to me that we are on a road to putting our long-term fiscal policy into balance. Uh, and if that remains true by the end of this year, that we are essentially at the end of the year where we are now, then the risks accumulate. Uh, and the Federal Reserve has been printing money. 
to uh, finance the uh, government deficit, uh, buying uh, a, a lot of government bonds. And at some point, that's going to come apart. And it might come apart, might come apart in a fashion that is rather like August of 2007, where things seem to be uh, going smoothly, and then all of a sudden it all falls apart. And the question is, do we have adequate contingency plans in place should that happen? And I right. fear that we do not. Uh, before we let you go, William, when these transcripts come out, uh, do they evoke any memories for you, good or bad, about these meetings? Oh, well, they evoke uh, lots of memories. Now, I haven't seen the transcript, of course, <clears throat> and I look forward to uh, reviewing it uh, because that, uh, that was my last full year in office. It was a wonderful experience to be there. I learned an awful lot. And uh, w certainly one of the things I reflect on is uh, the, the various uh, points that we missed, uh, that I missed and my colleagues missed. William Poole, uh, former St. Louis Fed president, thank you so much for your time. And, Steve, thanks you uh, for sticking around.